back to the ESL Legendary Series. My name is TJ Osmond Cutie Sanders. Once again, joined by Great Torp. How you What's doing, my man? full name? Andre Gritorp Hengchua. Wow, it was so good. TJ, you're a real host, bro. No, I just have really great perifs, and so I could look at, at our oh, at wow. our monitor and see. Wow, yeah. it's still very strong. Impressed, mm -hmm. TJ. Impressed. This is our first time casting together. I have to say, I love it, TJ. I'm. It's like my top 10 things to do in A. <laughs> we actually had a conversation earlier uh, on the list of top 10 things to do in Burbank on Yelp. It's Number TJ. like six is meet me. I don't even live in Burbank. You don't. Uh, I was saying, you're an elusive character in Burbank, but once once we wrangle you, mm -hmm. set you down on the cast, get some caffeine in you, Yep. you are like a Mexican jumping bean. <laughs> exactly. There's still a question of whether or not jumping beans actually are Mexican, but that's for another day. We're actually just about to move into the winner's match right. of, of Group A. It's going to be Amaz uh, taking on Luigi's. Amaz, of course, oh. from Team Archon. Luigi's currently teamless. He actually took a long, we talked about it earlier, he took a long break from Hearthstone. The last tournament he competed in before the Challenger Cup to participate in the Legendary Series was six months ago, before GVG. And as we talked about before, much has changed since GVG, but if you're going to play a class mm -hmm. that is least susceptible to making mistakes, I would say <laughs> it's the Hunters. A lot of people would agree with you. It is the hunters. A lot of people. I I've seen like stories on Reddit. They're like, oh, my friend's like rank four hunter and he can't beat X solo adventure on normal. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, well, that makes a lot of sense. <laughs> yeah, there was a story about, no, never mind. Not going to go. <laughs> Don't go there. <laughs> Not gonna Don't go, go there. Into it. But uh, I, I, these I aren't just these aren't just skill hunters. They're yeah. mid-range hunters. Mid-range hunter, yeah. I, so, I played mid-range hunter from... Um, from rank two, four stars to legend this season. That's what I need to do, man. Yeah. Well, I mean, it was just so strong. I, I was facing so yeah. many decks that did be fantastic against. And I so mean, the big part about it, I think, uh, uh, that's a little bit different than this conquest uh, type of deal is yeah. that on um, on ladder, a lot of people are like, oh, okay, he's just going face. Mm. We're yeah. going to build our opening hand a certain way. We're going to defend against you know the regular face hunter, and then you're coming out with mid range. You're like, whoa, 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 that. That's not supposed to come out yet. You know, yeah. I'm supposed to have Molten Giants by now. Mm -hmm. And you're not actually pushing face on me until you have, like, 15 to 20 points of damage that you're able to do in, like, one turn. Yeah. That's really scary. Which is not that hard to come by when no. you're playing a mid-range hunter. Definitely not. Get a Savannah Hyman on the board and one kill command. All of a sudden, you have 11 damage burst. That is a ton. 13 with hero power. You just need to find a couple more. Yeah. Like a Huffer. That's easy. Easy I mean, peasy, bro. <laughs> exactly. It's always so. I mean... It's skilled, yeah, but it's easy peasy. I'm actually going to do a uh, an experiment. Go I'm on. going to play Hunter, uh, all variations of Hunter, and I'm going to keep track of every single roll of Animal Companion that I get over hundreds of games, so uh -huh. a large sample size, and see if the percentage is actually 32.3, repeating, of course, percent. That'll be interesting. I'll post back my results. Please. <laughs> at the Season 2 <laughs> it'll be Land a, Finals. It'll be a great use of your time. <laughs> exactly. That's what I'm going to do until the Land Finals. So, of course, make sure you tune in if you want the results. I can't wait until you rank 1 Legendary, too. <laughs> the rank 1 Legendary. <laughs> Still rolling up. <laughs> uh, it'll be very interesting. I don't know if you know, but like I am a huge stats machine. All I do yeah. in life is do stats, man. I love doing statistics. Mm -hmm. I um. Tell me earlier, you were a statistics major. In yeah, that's right. I even have gone so far. Uh, I went to a, a used bookstore recently, and I found a math book. And I just started, you'll see me tonight, because we're sharing a room tonight. <laughs> yes, we are. You'll see me tonight, and I will be on my math book. And it's, uh, I've told this on my stream before, that I just bust out my calc book. I start doing calculus for fun. Wow. Because do you know why? Why? <laughs> Perpetuating, stere perpetuating stereotypes, I love math. It's it's like my hobby right now. So you get back to me. <laughs> <laughs> those, I will. Those hover numbers. In the meantime, we actually have a game going on. Oh, do we? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so one thing I want to point out here is um, uh, Luigi's has an inherent advantage in this game, if only because he has Harrison Jones. These guys' decks are very similar. Now, one thing that Luigi's does is um, he, he sort of tries to break the mold of certain decks okay. with cards of his own. I was talking to him uh, in the tournament that he, in the Challenger Cup to, that he played, that he qualified in to get to the Legendary Series match day today. He played Abomination. 
in his Whoa. control warrior. Whoa. The abomination, if you don't know what abomination is, the viewers out there, because you may not have ever seen it, like outside of Arena. 4-4 four, four with Taunt. When it, it dies, it does two, two damage, damage to all characters. It's actually really, really powerful, I think, mm -hmm. in general, of just, like, super clearing pretty efficiently. It's five mana. Uh, yeah. A lot of times, you're, the big minions that get placed uh, will actually go down. Like, if you have a Dr. Boom there, yeah. you're getting rid of pretty much both Boom bots and taking the Dr. Boom down pretty hard. Yeah. Uh, so there's a lot of capacity to just completely swing, th or, no, I shouldn't say swing things, more so, like, clear up and make it very uncomfortable for your next turn. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's a really good point. And Luigi's is a player that likes to do things like that. Yeah. Uh, Oasis Snapjaw in his mid-range hunter. That's kind of weird, but, you know, it makes sense, of course. With Houndmaster, you taunt it up, becomes a 4-9. That thing is gigantic. That was a beat. That was the web spinner, but he does run yeah, Oasis Snapjaw. He, he yeah. actually runs a legitimate Oasis Snapjaw. It's uh, quite interesting. That one was a not... Beast. As our, our producer just said, oh, it came off Web Spinner. We know... I feel you. Okay, I don't even I know. Feel you. He's just yelling obscenities right <laughs> now. So we, we, we don't even know. Our producers are are, uh, are kind of out of control these days. Exactly, yeah. You okay. sort of have to be, though. Savannah Hymen on turn six. So a lot of times in this matchup, the player that gets overwhelming board control first wins. Now, mid range hunters do have ways to come back in the game with cards with combinations like um, Knife Juggler Unleash mm -hmm. um, or like uh, Hunter's Mark. Sorry, I was drawing a blank for that for the name there. Hunter's Mark, things like that. But usually, the player it's that gets the high main down first, a lot of times has a, a, a quite a significant advantage. He's gonna go for face here. Makes a lot of sense. <laughs> Just <laughs> <Don't you>? <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> Damn right it does. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I gotta I gotta find it more commentary. Oh wow! Hunter is choosing face here. Very interesting. He yeah. could have gone for a trade, TJ. Instead he went for face. Yeah. The, wow. Now of course midrange hunter, a lot of times they do play board control early, but um I mean at this point Luigi sort of has to. He's running out of cards. Yeah. Is one thing. He does have Harrison Jones, so that's a way. If Amaz does play a weapon, which he doesn't even have one in his hand, it's a way for him to not only stop that tempo of, that the weapon gains, but mm -hmm. also he'll draw a card, which brings him deeper into his deck, which right now he's run out of cards. The beast that comes off that web spinner is actually going to be a pretty big deal. Yep. Yep. Uh, here is, an, like, there are a lot of options for Amaz, though. I, I really feel like he has the capacity. Yeah, I was going to say Iron Beak L, go for the kill command, trade out, and... Um, uh, do you go for face here, or do you try to kill a mad scientist? I, I think you just go for face here. Yeah. Because you trade, if you trade for the mad scientist, you're basically saying, well, my Savannah Hyman's going to get freezing trap next turn unless I control a charge. Well, you you have... Um, uh, yeah, no, no, that's true. That's true. Yeah. So it, you go for the kill command here, take out this Savannah Hyman, and then just start trying to put... Oh, wow, he's actually oh, wow, going to trade. going to trade. Okay, he gets two, two twos. You know what? That's not bad because he has a lot of stuff on the board and also now he has ways to be able to uh, push into Freezing Trap and mm -hmm. not have to worry. Like he loses a 2-1, um, well, his Iron Beak Owl, he still has like the silence that is capable of, you know, kind yeah. of doing stuff a little bit later on. Uh, it's not actually the worst. I think it's actually slightly better than keeping the uh, Savannah Hymen on the board. Also cashes in on his own Savannah, Savannah Hymen, so that oh, way yeah. the same thing can't happen to him that just happened to Luigi's. That's true. Where it just gets silenced and taken out, so uh, being able to cash in uh, like that is good. And of course, like you mentioned, being able to, to proc what, whichever trap comes out of this Mad Scientist relatively easily. He would get punished by Explosive Trap. That's true. But he probably watched the matches with Luigi's earlier, yeah, and precisely. Uh, he knows that most likely there's no Explosive Trap, because we did get through quite a big portion of the Hunter deck for Luigi's That's thought. true, man. All right, so now it's like a lot of options for Maz. He does have a little bit of tempo right now. He is going to go ahead and trade out first. And then he can get back his Iron Beak Owl. Yep, exactly what he wants to do. And uh, he can go and silence the Shredder if he really wants to. He could even silence the Web Spinner. <laughs> I mean, it seems funny at first, but then you're thinking... like. He's out of cards. Exactly. Like, get rid of as many cards as possible. The last thing yeah. you want is, like, a big T-Rex smashing into your face. Yeah, you're, you're banking on whether or not whatever he gets from the web spinner, is it going to be stronger than what he gets from the powder shredder? Granted, yep. powder shredder, you don't have to spend mana to get whatever that comes yeah, yeah, from yeah. it. But 
but you could just halt momentum immediately. Mm -hmm. But no, he's just going to throw out his high main. That's uh, completely reasonable. I mean, we're just going over permutations of what could happen. Uh, it looks like he gets the Tundra Rhino. Yeah. All right. Well, Kill command. <laughs> Luigi's is at 26 health, and Amaz is sitting on lethal next <laughs> so, yeah. he, so he has uh, 10 damage from hand, 12 damage if you account for the hero power. Yep. Um, and then... Um, 12, 14. So yeah, 20, exactly 26 damage. It's, uh, so he's got to clear brutal. something off here. He's yeah. going to. Uh, makes a lot of sense, obviously. <laughs> um, and that's a nice little thing that is going to happen because he's going to... Oh, he goes for face here. Uh, of course, actually. He's, he just he's, has he's, to race. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. He has to. My bad. So that's, that's not lethal just yet. He's got 11... Um, Plus the 12 damage from his hand. He's got 23, so he's three off at the moment. So, so he has some Misha here, right? Like, that's going to be the priority, and then he's going to fill around that Misha. Yeah, he has to clear the board uh, as, as much yep. as possible. Make sure that the board is as clean as possible, and set up lethal for next turn. Make sure okay. that he has, like, a guaranteed lethal for next turn. Yep. But he's on a clock now. He's not going to last much longer. There's five guaranteed damage just from the, from the weapon and the hero power alone next turn. And so he has to probably... Uh, Put the high main into the Tundra Rhino, and then Misha? To uh, yeah. increase the chance that he hits the, he hits the, the pilot of Shredder with the one attack. That's okay. I mean, it happens. Yeah. And he's just going to trade out. Yeah, either way, he still puts himself in a position. All he has to do is, um, yeah, attack face for 22 damage is, is going to be just enough. All right. Dr. Boom, not going to be enough here. No. As... Uh, just caught in a bad situation. I mean, he's still at 22 health, so he's not going to like concede out yet because no. he's putting it. He he's has like, to have a lot of damage. You don't have that much damage, yeah. do you? You're Come just on, a man. hunter. Putting him on having double kill command, but he does have it, so that is going right, to man. be a Maz taking game number one. I mean, he only needed one kill command, too, to finish that out. Kill yeah. command hero power, that would have been enough. Mm -hmm. That being said, very clean win overall by a Maz. I mean, you're looking at. Uh, how do you beat, like, uh, an aggressive deck? You go slightly more control yeah, yeah. than that aggressive deck, right? That's generally how you beat, like, the mid-range or, you yeah. know, like, the early. You do always try to be a little bit more control, and if you get too control, you go super aggro. Yeah. Right? So it's always that, like, rock, paper, scissor almost. Yeah, there was a big uh, thread on, I can't remember if it was the competitive Hearthstone subreddit or uh, just the regular Hearthstone subreddit of... Um, like the difference between Magic and the difference between Hearthstone and whether or not you want to be slightly slower or a lot faster or the, or you want to be slightly faster and a lot slower. Mm -hmm. And uh, um, in Hearthstone, actually, a, a lot of time it benefits for being uh, slightly faster or a lot slower. Yeah. Because slightly, you said slightly faster in the aggro matchup um, uh, usually wins you the games or s a lot slower in the control matchup will usually win you the games in that, in that scenario. So um, it, th there's a lot of intricacies that go into it. It's not always like cut and dry like that yeah but it, it's it gives you things to think about when you're when you're playing decks like that so i think in general for like laddering up it's better to be more aggressive because you're basically forcing your opponents to know exactly what your deck is uh and have answers and have answers and have uh the right execution to it all too yeah. and i think you know when you're grinding through ladder there's a lot more mistakes that can happen but as you get into these type of matchups where it's a lot of mind games i think <laughs> Slowing down, controlling. I mean, Hunter again. What a mind game. Amos cleaned his room. Oh yeah. It's a little bit, a little bit tidy. Yeah, up. in that bottom left corner. S since we, whatever since that we blue saw. thing was, it's now <laughs> hanging over his door. Look at that man. Looks like a giant pair of sweatpants. That is a giant pair of sweatpants. If yeah. it's sweatpants, I don't think it's sweatpants though. No, it I, looks like bed sheets. Hanging. I don't know. Maybe it's a blue screen. <laughs> there you go. Spot on. Could be, bro. We've settled it. It's a blue screen. It's a blue screen. It's just a blue screen for that specific portion. That's where his <laughs> logo goes. Yeah. That's that's good. All right, so Druid versus Hunter. Uh, now, this matchup is actually really tough for the Druid. Um, a lot of times, the Hunter can get off to a really explosive start. Mm -hmm. and, and Druids are, even with a fast start, like a lot of Druids can have with Wild Growth, like Wild Growth into Shade into Paladin Shredder, or Wild Growth into Paladin Shredder into a 5-drop. Hunters can still deal with that relatively easily. And if a hunter gets to like turn six with control over the board and can play a high main safely, mm -hmm. a lot of times 
Druids can't come back yeah. from a situation like that. It's out of control. I mean, the biggest thing about that high main is that a lot of people, you know, have that um, that BGH deck slot, and BGH like does nothing in this matchup, and especially with Druid. I mean, you really have no capacity to use that. Um, Moves like Shade of Next Ramus, which is normally uh, a really clutch card for a lot of the control matchups, just doesn't have a good place here because it's like it's so slow. You want it to actually yeah. activate, but once you activate it, it's so weak. Yeah, a lot of times what a Shade does in this matchup is kill a Knife Juggler. <laughs> yeah. So you're killing a two drop basically with a three drop. With a three drop. Yeah. And it, it's just really rough. I mean, if you can get to the point where the Hunter just doesn't have early drops or all they have is a web spinner. And then don't have anything to like turn four. Yep. And you can get your shade rolling a little bit, get your pilot shutter yeah. out first. Then you can actually win pretty easily because when you have control of the board, you have good ways to keep control uh -huh. because you have keepers for the high mains. Yeah. And then you just need to find a way to put that five damage or you have wrath for the knife juggler or wrath for the pilot shutter. Yeah. But once you lose control, I think uh, actually the force of natures, the two force of natures that he has, it's like so important. It yeah. Actually, it's just really good trade because I think in general you want to just have like top deck versus top deck. That's the mm. best possible situation that you get if you are druid because you know yeah. your drops are going to be much heavier yeah. and much stronger. Um, so the force of natures just clears the board really quickly, and you're able to hopefully get into. The later stages of the game. It's oh. just surviving. Wow. That's a nice a little four. drop there, bro. Replace a 4-3 with a 4-3. <laughs> it's like Powdered Shredder. It, it's Resummon an, itself. It's an 8-6 it's an for 4. Yeah, that's, that's ridiculous. That's not bad. That's not bad. It is split apart, but that's like the yeah. ultimate Dragonling mechanic. Yeah, man. Or whatever that card is. I don't know. I played in Arena when I there's nothing the else to five, pick. 5 six? No, it's a 2. Well, yeah, it's 2-4. It's a 2-4 and a 2-1. Oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> a power show is a four. That power show is a four three and a four three. <laughs> so a four three and a four three is quite a bit better than a two four and a two one. A little bit, bro. A little yeah. bit. Yeah. So right. It makes you wonder, like, why well, would why anybody there, ever right? run? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There's a lot of cards that are like this. Like, why is well, this even here? The best is like you get that, and you're up against a rogue, and you get um, the the zero four. What was it? The Shield bear? No, 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 no. The the legendary. Lower Walker Cho. Lower Walker <laughs> Cho. And you're just like, oh, thanks for the game. Thanks, yeah. Pilot Shredder. I yeah. appreciate it. <laughs> or even Druid. It's yeah. Oh, here's your Force of Nature. Force of Nature is also really good good at proccing freezing traps. That's also true. Um, because you're essentially spending. It, it's weird, but you're essentially spending sort of two mana, on two mana. Yeah. And you're getting the card back. And with charge, right? Yeah, because if you if you split apart Force of Nature, each 2-2 two -two is worth 2 mana, then you're getting rid of the Freezing Trap with the charge from one of the two guys, and you're bringing it back, so then you can use it to proc another Freezing Trap it's later on. It's beautiful, man. Yeah. It really is. It does cost three. It costs actually three mana when you actually play it back, which is weird. You would think it would be four, right? Or two. Or two? Yeah. yeah. Uh, I don't know. I don't know, two. I yeah. thought it would be four or something. Four, like yeah, that. since it, w it essentially would cost two, but... Um, yeah, it's it's good for, for things like that as well. It's a really great card against Midrange Hunter in general. So now that Druid has been able to stabilize, I mean, he has the other force of nature that helps so much. He has the Harrison Jones to shut down a lot of momentum spikes that could happen. Mm -hmm. I mean, I feel like Druid is in a perfect situation to be able to win this game. Yeah, I, I would uh, definitely agree. Because, I mean, right now, he's just on a, a Savage Roar draw to end the game. Yeah. All right, high main pops out. I mean, it's the best that he can do at this point. Druid of the Claw pops. And uh, he has seven damage on the field. Of course, Force of Nature is another six. He's just going to Sludge Belcher into can actually Pilot just, of Shredder. Yeah, you can just put on pressure. Yeah. I mean, a high main by itself on the board, if you have control, it's not that threatening. It's no. one body. Yeah. It, it trades into a Sludge Belcher. Even if you kill Command, you're still trading the, the yeah. high main into a one-two. Like, it's, it, it, either way, it's uh, a bad situation. Yeah. Realistically, too, you want, like, your I mean to die. Yeah. Uh, especially now to proc the buzzard. Yeah. I don't think he can, though. Oh, okay. Yeah, he can. Of course. Uh, I'd be Gala to draw a card, but w what is he really he's hoping to accomplish here? Yeah, I mean. He's going to draw. He has no turn right yeah. now. And now it's just force of nature into a win. A really well played, I think, overall by uh, 
by our druid friend over here, but like he, he drew into <laughs> our, druid, our, druid our druid friend. A druid friend of Maz. That's right. Uh, I mean, it's just like a very, very clear um, yeah. stabilization in the early game stage. Mm -hmm. He's able to get, I mean, the double force of nature. He only used one, but the second one is just like yeah. extra security to keep him safe well, as he goes towards the later stages. Well, that's that's uh, not necessarily smart by Maz, but you notice he, he had lethal with the force of nature, but decided to use the druid call instead. He doesn't want Well, one, he doesn't want to give up the fact that he has force of nature, which I mean, he's already beat him with druid, so it doesn't really matter. Mm -hmm. People could go back, watch the VODs from today and see it. But another thing is, he took druid call off the top. So thinking that you top deck lethal makes your opponent think, oh, great, he got lucky and top deck lethal could put him on tilt. That's it's true. the whole psychological effect of when, when you have two copies of a card or two ways to do something, like two ways to finish the game, and one comes off the top, you always take the one off the top. Yeah. Just, be, just because of that psychological, lo, psychological aspect of it. Yeah, I mean, it really affects, I would say, more so the, the amateur players the yeah, most. Like, because like, like <laughs> When someone throws a jewelry yeah. off the top... <sighs> and what you have to do, right, the the number one thing you have to do is you have to click it. You have to hover over the board and just keep it there. Wait five <laughs> seconds so that your opponent sees, there's a card. He's about to play it. And then you finally show, oh, yeah. I had lethal the whole time. Yeah. I was just making sure that you knew I had lethal the whole time. Mm -hmm. Just dig it in. Yep. This is the shank, man. <laughs> you dig it in. There's also those times when, uh, like, you're, you're on a top deck lethal to win the game with, like, a spell. But you draw a spell that you can't target face, like Shield Slam or like Execute. Uh -huh. But you can still make the target yeah. arrow target face. So you like <laughs> want them to concede. Yeah. So you like take the spell and slowly arrow it towards their face as a bluff. Oh, I know. And then like, ah, oh, concede, but it's just like an Execute or a Shield Slam. It's the perfect thing to do, man. I know. I've actually conceded to things, well, probably have conceded to things <laughs> like that in the past. I was like, oh, he probably has Pyroblast. He probably like top decked a Kona Cold. He can't even target He's the just face. messing with you. Yeah. Oh, well. All right, we are jumping into Warlock versus Warlock. Amaz only needs to win one more game to move directly into the semifinals tomorrow. Yep. Uh, as we're, as you just said, um, the big thing about this, I mean, both these guys are going to move on to tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Yep. Uh, but it really affects your seeding because it's no longer group stages after today. Tomorrow yep. is like a single elimination bracket. Yep. And winning here guarantees that you don't have to play extra best of fives so that, you know, you can obviously get to the top a lot safer. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You can spend more time laddering. Yeah. Now, before last week, it was actually, it felt like a disadvantage to getting placed directly in the semifinals. Why? Because the first two weeks, the winner came all the way from the elimination match in that second day. So every single player that made it to the semifinals, that was automatically seated in the semifinals in week one and two, Lost in the semifinals. Maybe because they weren't warmed up, they weren't like ready or ready, warmed up with their decks. But it was a weird thing. But then it might be sample size, though, man. It is, yeah. Because in week three, it changed. Kabi, the the guy who won, actually got directly seated in the semifinals and ended up winning the yeah. whole thing. And what I mean by sample size is, of course, it's just like a small amount of samples to really be able to determine anything mm -hmm. or conclude anything. Okay, Mr. Statistician. I mean, I have to say, and he, N is less than 30, okay? Yeah. You can't. We can't approximate normal distributions at this point. Uh, hello, you don't have a large enough uh, sample size. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that hello? was my my Greetorp impression. Oh, really? Was it fantastic? <laughs> it was very good. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> you did a, a an impression of my Greetorp impression. Uh, that was spot on. No, it was very good. <laughs> I thought it was spot on. Uh, we're already on turn five in this <laughs> game. Oh, we have a Hearthstone game going on again. Yes, we do. Okay. And this is the handlock versus handlock, which we talked about earlier in our yep. in our, our first series that we casted together. And um, It's all about which player can get their threats to stick the most. Like, which player yeah. gets that first big threat to stick on the board, gain them gain themselves the initiative. Looks like it's Luigi's right now. Obviously, we mm -hmm. can see that he has a mountain giant. I mean, it's still, there's so many things that you can do in this mid-game stage, but like now he has a 410 on the board too, which is so scary. How do you get rid of both of them? It's very difficult. He's gonna dark bomb uh, the last remaining threat because he doesn't want to be traded into and then mortal coiled. So it makes a lot of sense. Now it's like, if I'm a Maz, what do I do in this spot? Because I'm at 28 health too. It's not looking good. You have to throw out inefficient trades like this, uh, like this Belcher. He's going to dark bomb. That's fine. But it's still like a very defensive play. You still don't 
have the right utility just yet. It's not guaranteed that you're going to be able to play Dr. Boom. There's just a lot of what ifs. By the way, how do you like the Siphon Soul? Because I, um, I personally really dislike Siphon Soul in general. Uh, I'm sorry. Personally, <laughs> I disagree with the Siphon Soul as it accomplishes the wrong thing. I, I'm on the fence about it. Um, a couple weeks ago, I would have said no to the Siphon Soul. Uh, just because there was so much really fast aggro. Mm -hmm. There was Mech Mage was a little bit more popular. Uh, even the Tempo Mage was starting to gain traction with the Flame Waker when that came out. Face Hunter was the go-to hunter deck. Um, and a lot of times you just didn't, you never had time to play Siphon Soul. It'd be mm -hmm. dead in your hand. But it, the meta's slower right now. It, there's a lot more controly or slower type decks. So there is a lot of times where you do have time to play a Siphon Soul, and it is exactly what you need. Direct removal. So the reason why, like, I, I am still on the fence with it. Okay. I will say that. I didn't do a good enough job convincing you. No, you didn't. Okay. It was just awful. But, no, I'm just <laughs> kidding. It was No, no. Uh, I mean, uh, I, I kind of agree with you. The fact that, you know, things have slowed down, so it fits a lot more. Yeah. But what is your target? It's going to be things like boom. It's going to be big things. Those are really good things, though. Those are, but it's in terms of mana efficiency, you're getting one. There are still boom bat bots out in the field. And when are you going to do that? Turn eight? So you have two mana left to do what? Like, it's really difficult. It's hard to synergize with things. It's hard to synergize when your mountain giants are so important and you want to burst those down as fast as possible. Yeah. So realistically, you don't want to do it at turn six, right? Turn mm -hmm. six is a really bad time to do it because you're for sure trading it with, at best, a six drop. So like a Thorazine. Well, I think that's a really good trade, though. It, it is. But that's the only scenario where it's good. Mm -hmm. And then yeah. it's like, okay, after turn 7, 8, 9, 10, uh, plus plus, it's like, okay, well, there are better removals. There, It's better just to get momentum with your cards. A lot of times I feel like, you know, I was playing with it for a while, and I just realized I was never really using it. And it's because it's so hard still, even though it's controlling, to fit it in and also get something out on the board, yeah. have it be useful. Yeah. It just six mana is so much. It I would is. I would even uh, consider the Demon Heart. The five damage yeah. for five? Is okay. it called Demon Heart? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> consider kidding. that more. Whenever you say something that's correct, I'm gonna like look at you weird. Well, and then whenever you say something that's wrong, <laughs> See, I'm gonna nod my head. <laughs> so I go by the principle, I'm just gonna shove it out there. You tell me if it's wrong or right. The people will tell me if it's wrong or right, but these are my opinions. You know? This is just no, how no. I feel. I, I, I agree with you. It, it can it can sometimes be really hard to use. And I think it, it only recently started to make a comeback because of the mirror. Um, uh, I, I think yeah. it's really strong in the mirror because two BGHs ain't enough. Yeah. Uh, because true. imagine in a late game scenario where you're at, you have 10 mana, you're at 14 health. Yeah. He has a mountain giant on the board. You can play a Molten Giant and then Siphon Soul. All of a sudden, you just swung your health, your 17 health now, and you have a Molten, a molten Giant on the board, and he's That's got true. nothing. That's true. So it, it just goes a little bit further. Like, there's, you're substituting another sort of piece of removal, essentially. Um, we, some players sub out another 6 drop. Like, I've seen people cut Sylvanas for it. Yeah. Which Sylvanas sort of served the same purpose as a Siphon yeah, Soul. Yeah, yeah, I agree. It's just agree. more immediate. Um, I've also seen, I mean, Double Shadow Flame kind of died yeah. a long time yep, ago, yep. but I've seen sometimes it comes back here and there. Uh, and obviously, Sylvanas plus your um, plus the Shadow Flame is just a god combo. Absolutely yeah. love that. Yeah. I think we've beat the yeah. Siphon Soul we're, horse we're, We've talked about death. Siphon Soul enough. Yeah. As it stands right now, Maz is in kind of a rough shape, obviously. Look at that board. It's so beautiful mm -hmm. for Luigi's. Yeah. Um, he's just in a, a very, very tough spot. He can tap Double Molten and Sun Fury. Yes, he can definitely do that. But, but how dangerous is that? Is he dead? He'll be at 12 health. There is uh, 16 damage staring at him on the board. Uh, he'd basically be gaining 16 points of health. So if he, if he can factor in one silence, so he'll be able to gain eight, so mm -hmm. there'll be eight damage staring at him on the board. Oh, wow. Look at this. Interesting. And he's, I mean, there's still targets that they have to go through, but, man, that is that is rough. That is this lethal? That feels like a... No, I don't think no, that's no, lethal. No, no. Because no. if he Hellfires, yeah, he's yeah. clearing off most of his own board. Um, okay. So he doesn't... 
<clears throat> it, uh, I think it's the best of the plays that he could have done. The yeah. Molten Giants are just like so hard to, to push out at that point. Um, it's just like he's trying to survive. And he's, he needs that momentum switch. And it's going to be with like a Molten Giant plus Taunt or Molten Giant plus Shadow Flame, that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. But he needs that stabilizer and then to switch into Draxus. I think he has to right now because he's out of, he's out of taps. He's like being pushed back way too much and he needs something legitimately out there the six sixes is obviously what i'm talking about he needs those those uh those huge huge um you know yeah threats to yeah just stabilize him we talked about it a little bit earlier playing double molten giants because sometimes you're risky but right now yeah. this is the perfect time to play you, you can so? control your opponent's oh, health. Oh, yeah, that's true. That's your true. opponent basically gave you a free opportunity to double Molten Giant. Because right now, he can put him at a situation, put him at the perfect amount of health to where oh, yeah. Molten Giant Shadow Flame is not a possibility. It's done, man. Well, he actually didn't. I would have held off on all attacks. Really? Because he has lethal. He would have lethal on board regardless. Well, he still can't do a Molten Giant Shadow Flame. Yeah, that's true. He, I mean, it's still impossible for him, even if he yeah. taps. Yeah, because right. he would it'd be a six-man Molten Giant. He'd have eight man. He wouldn't be able to play it. Yeah, that, yeah. So he's okay. I mean, I, he's he's dead, I think. I don't know what he can do here. Okay, uh, he's going to go and start drawing. Yeah. But, I mean, no matter what he throws out, it could be instantly silenced. And then, I mean, double eight, 16 damage. Yeah, uh, can't do anything. I, I've taken a lot of math courses, and I think 16 is greater than 15. It is, by a slight margin. At least one. At least one. Yeah. Possibly more. Possibly more. Didn't take the time to count. All right. That's going to do it, though. He's going to throw out a Molten Giant or just concede right here. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, Luigi finds his way back for one game. He's still got to win two more. Amaz has two chances left. He only needs to find a win with that hand lock in order to secure his spot in the semifinals. That's right. I think, uh, I mean, Amaz is obviously in, in a much, much better position. Handlock is pretty good against most of, like, the matchups. Like, they have, it's not, like, but super winning. Go ahead. Luigi's has Druid and Hunter left, which are the, if I had to say, the two weakest matchups Correct. for Handlock. Correct. So, there's a chance that we could see sort of, uh, like, a reverse sweep here where Amaz goes up 2-0. And then falls 3-2, just judging by the, the matchup of these next two decks. There is a chance, though, that, like, a as bad as they can be, mm -hmm. um, you can get really freaking good draws. Like, if I'm able to draw into Molten Giants very quickly, I mean, not so much in, in uh, Hunter, but if I can do it in, in Druid, yeah, uh, it just, at least once or one or two, like, I can, I can just snowball out of control very quickly if I am the Warlock yeah. or the Handlock. Uh, against Hunter, obviously, it's... I need to find those Hellfires. I need to be able to use them well. Yeah. I need to get things like my uh, my Ancient Watchers out and just have... Well, it's a uh, mid-range, right? Yeah. So, so the, the thing about these two decks is they control the state of the board really well early on. Yeah. They have a lot of valuable creatures early that control the state of the board. Hunters have... Uh, I mean, of course, they run owls. They have traps, like Freezing Trap, which mm -hmm. does a really fantastic job of, of controlling the board. And they have a lot of sticky creatures like... Paladin Shredder and Savannah High Main. Um, and it's the same with Druid. If a Druid gets a, a explosive start with Wild Growth and can get out some early creatures, both of those these decks can burst you down from 20 health. Yeah. Or yeah. from a little bit less than 20 health as long as they have the board. And that's the toughest thing, too, because we kept talking about, like, we want to get our health down so we can actually activate yeah. the Molten Giants. <laughs> we can't really wait too long for our Mountain Giants mm -hmm. just because if we wait too long, they're going to have board control, and, you know, we, we play a mountain giant on an empty board. They BGH it, and it's like the saddest of sad beans. Uh, we can see a BGH. Oh, no, wrong guy. BGH was already out, though, for a Warlock, though. Yeah. Not going to help him too much at the beginning here. No. Um, now, Luigi's doesn't have a really explosive start here. Didn't no. get Wild Growth. Didn't have Shade or Pilot Shredder, but he does have Intervate. So he can get out a really big drop early on. Now, the thing that he wants to make sure is that he curves out well. The one trap that players fall in when making big innervate plays early on is they say, oh, I'm going to make this, I'm going to double innervate into this Dr. Boom. But then they don't have a play for turn four, turn five, yeah. turn six. And so you want to make sure that you curve out. And he actually does here. So he's going to use the innervate, but not the coin. So next turn, he can keep her. 
The following turn after that, he effectively has six mana to work with, even though it's only turn five because of the coin. So he's likely to draw into something. All right. Dark Bomb, Acid, Acidic Swamp Ooze. Mm -hmm. uh, seems very reasonable. We it, se it, it seems reasonable, <laughs> but it's kind of weak. Because if he throws out Acidic Swamp Ooze there, you know that his hand is garb. Yeah. Total garb. I mean, you know there's no Mountain Giants there. There's no uh, Toilet Drakes. Yeah. Toilet Drakes. What are you going to do? <laughs> yeah. I read it on Reddit recently. Yeah, I was like, nice meme. Thanks, Rob. <laughs> I wish I wish I could come up with something like that. <laughs> it was so beautiful. I was like, "What's a toilet drink?" It was poetic. Oh, yeah, that's so deep, bro. Poetic. So deep. Yeah. So swipe. Th this seems like a weird play, considering hey, you just have a keeper. You can do two damage to it and put a body on the board. But yep. those keepers are so crucial for the twilight drakes. Um, and I mean, Agreed. essentially, you're using a four mana spell. Uh, you're using four mana on both turns. This one doesn't put a buy in the board, but you're saving it for the all-important keeper. Mm -hmm. And now look at the, I mean, this is the perfect drop, too. Azure Drake into turn six, Dr. Boom. You're saving the coin. Oh, wow. Even gets an Innervate, too. Uh, I mean, he could Dr. Boom or Ancient of Lore, hmm. but I think Dr. Boom is going to be a lot, a lot better because he has two Savage Roars. Dose. That's more than one. More than one. Slightly less. Slightly less than three. <laughs> I was going to say five. Oh. In that ballpark, but yeah, it also is <laughs> slightly less than three. And he was thinking the last turn about actually uh, killing off the iter first iteration of the Sludge Belcher here uh -huh. by innervating out a hero power. Um, but he opted against it, and maybe he might regret that decision slightly. Possible. Because uh, now instead of being left with... It, uh, the board just would have been empty. Now he has to deal with a Sludge Belcher. He does still have an innervate because of it. But I'm not sure how useful that innervate is going to be later in the game. Yeah. Because a lot of times, double combo is not needed. Yeah. It's very redundant because Warlock's already going down that well. Yeah. Uh, wow. Ouch. That is a lot of damage to take. Four damage to the face. Very unfortunate. Does he want that, though? Uh, I'm, I'm very curious if he wants that or not. I mean, it, it's hard to say, in my opinion, because like you still want to threaten if you do draw into... Yeah. Um, and obviously he has a nice wall up here, right? Yeah. Like it's very difficult to get rid of this, especially because he knows, okay, a swipe was used. He has combos. He probably has two combos. Generally, druids do. Um, if I just wall up like this, there's no chance, and I can eventually start tapping into really, really powerful cards. Because, I mean, it's more than likely that, like, he's so, going to start tapping into a really good spot. This will buy him a lot of time. Luigi's like the... American Tice. Have you seen Tice play on webcam before? I have not. Oh, damn. It looks just like him. Do they? Never mind. Never <laughs> <laughs> I can see the wheels cheering and you're like, oh. <laughs> I was about to make a joke. No. I thought twice. There was May or may not have been appropriate. There's always... Uh, I'm among the crowd that if, if w there's one guy out there who's nodding along like, yeah, I know what he means. <laughs> <I've done laughs> it, it was a successful <laughs> statement or joke. So right. thank you, one guy out there who agrees with me. It's much appreciated. In my heart, I agree. <laughs> so Emperor Thorstein coming down when you have a, well, I wouldn't necessarily call it a stronger board, but Emperor Thorstein coming down when your board is protected or it's protected yep. is huge. Yep. Even just six cards in hand lock. That's I actually mean, a mild he still dies to uh, Savage Roar. Uh, or excuse me. Um, Force of Nature. Force of Nature, Savage Roar. He still yeah. dies to that right now. But, I mean, he realized, like, no matter what, my plays are going to die to that. Yeah. Right? So he might as well build in, in case that, well, the most optimal that he possibly can. He has some turn nines. Obviously, he can taunt up. He can go and play Lord Draxus. There's a lot of different options for him to... Uh, yeah. You can't, be able to do stuff. you can't play around it forever. No. You can't play around the combo forever. So at some point, you just have to start making aggressive trades. Or aggressive plays. Sorry, not trades. That's right. It is really scary, though. I mean, you're yeah. you're several turns in. I'm not sure the card count right now, but you're several turns in. You probably have drawn half your deck. The probability that based on having two of each of the cards is more than 50%. Yeah. Uh, so it is very, very, very scary. But... As you said, you have to just go with it. What if he, um, can he, no. I was thinking, like, 
Is there a permutation of double Savage Roar? But he's going to start trading out right now. He has to trade out Thorazanes. And I think he just... Um, hmm. Does he lure Jaraxxus and Ancient he, he, Watcher? He might... Yeah. I was, he might just have to do that. If only because that's the best way he can play around one combo. Uh, but it actually looks like he's going Whoa. to... Whoa. Whoa. It looks like he's going to go for a Defender of play. Okay. This actually builds the... Uh, this is actually... Uh, no, never mind. It's not the same. Either way, he... Double I, combo is the only thing that kills him right now. Yeah. I, I like that, honestly. Builds it's a bigger uh, wall. It, yes. It builds up. It has maintains the wall. Also, seven um, mana Jaraxxus. Seven mana Jaraxxus. He can Jaraxxus and play the Infernal and have one mana left over in a single turn. And play the Iron Peak Owl. If he if that Emperor Thorsan lives for one more turn, he can go Jaraxxus. Boom. Whoa. Wow. The value. The value. Um, Craig how, <laughs> how does he deal with this, man? Pog like, champ. Sorry? Nothing. I'm just listening off to achievement. Just ignore me. Oh, that's so cool, man. <laughs> Thanks. I, I need to find an impression of you, TJ. I did. It's impossible. I'm too hard to read. You are very Good hard luck. to read, okay? Good luck. Okay. And then... Is that an impression, or are you just talking? <laughs> no, okay, okay, okay. I'm just talking. I was like, that's a bad impression. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so... <laughs> uh, wow. The world. He's got the world on a string, man. He's sitting mm -hmm. on a rainbow. Mm -hmm. All right, so... <laughs> <laughs> the, 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 the <laughs> <laughs> Why did you laugh at that? I don't know. I thought it was a joke for a second. Oh, man. Okay, so we, the Lord Jirax is Dr. Boom in a single oh, turn. Oh, there you is go. Dead. Boom. Um, but he's going to be able to finish the game with the Jaraxxus. And there it is. Amaz will take it 3-1, ladies and gentlemen. And he's going to get a direct seed into the semifinals. That's that's actually a really important victory. We talked about it earlier. Uh, having to play one less match on that final day yep. takes so much stress off your shoulders because you, you, can, you can watch, you can comfortably, from your own home, your own Archon Gaming House, a brand that you own, just sit there. And, and watch the matches before you. Get a good idea of how your opponents are playing that day. And um, maybe you like practice some, some ladder games with some of your decks or something. And you only have to win two more matches in order to qualify. So Amaz, he's sitting in a great spot. He's going to be pretty happy going into tomorrow. And don't forget, $3,100 is up in the prize pool for these Legendary Series. Mm -hmm. So it's still a lot. First place, I believe, gets $1,700. And then top, uh, top four or top eight get uh, $200 each, yeah. which is... Uh, I mean, it's nothing to nothing to disregard by any means. So there's yeah. a lot of money on the line. On top of that, as you were talking about the the finals, twenty five thousand yeah. dollars over there. Yeah. That is a lot to fight for. And you know that twenty five dollars, twenty five thousand dollars doesn't just come out of thin air. Where does it, it comes come from? from our wonderful sponsors. We want to give a big shout out to uh, Plantronics and Gigabyte for joining us for the Hearthstone Legendary Series Season Two. We have a lot of fun stuff planned. We have a lot of Hearthstone action coming up over the next couple weeks with the Redemption Tournament, the Last Chance Qualifier, the LAN Finals, and none of that will be possible without the sponsors. So head to those links that you just saw below. Make sure you support the Legendary yeah. Series. And I have to say, TJ, you did a great job at scripting the Planetronics uh, uh, ads, man. <laughs> Thank like, you. Really, really well done. I uh, want to remember uh, or remind you guys to also stay in the conversation over on Twitter, hashtag HLS, and of course, ESL Hearthstone is our handle. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we'll be checking those tweets periodically throughout the day once we get a, a little bit of a, of a break here. And um, also, we just want to give you a reminder, the players that do end up getting eliminated today still have one more chance. Yes. Uh, the Redemption Tournament is actually going to happen next week, 14th, 15th, 16th, and 17th. So four days in a row of Legendary Series action. Every player that lost in one of the regular season weeks of the Legendary Series will be invited back. We'll, we'll split them into four separate seven-player groups, and the winner of each of those uh, those groups, those brackets, will make it to the Season 2 Land Finals and compete for that $25,000. It would be awesome if they only came back with one deck that they could play. Then it would be the real Redemption Tournament. It, wow. And it would have to be a signature deck. There's actually been people that have theorycrafted about single deck tournaments for a, for a long time, but that's a conversation for another time. The next match, of course, is going to be... Um, I believe we're going to go to Group B, so we can take oh, a look yeah. at uh, what actually what happened in Group A. So why don't you go over what happened in Group A for us there, Andre? Yep, we had uh, the first series of the day, which was Luigi's against um, against uh, Modern Leper. Uh, Luigi's was able to take that. Uh, then we had Cross against Amaz. Amaz was able to take that. 
our winners was, of course, what we just saw, yeah. Luigi's against Maz. Maz took that very handily. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, the losers, we saw uh, Cross get eliminated, unfortunately. Yeah. Uh, we, we did just talk about the redemption tournament, so he will have another chance, but we won't be seeing him uh, today or tomorrow. And of course, we do have Group B coming up next. The first match Group B is going to be Bunny Muffins versus Too Wet. Too Wet, of course, a player that's made it through twice now. This is the second time coming through the open hey, bracket. that is something that's really hard to do. It I is. mean, a lot of people give Hearthstone a little bit of, you know, uh, a little bit of, I would say, rep yeah. in general for being RNG. But mm -hmm. in reality, like, the very, very top, I think, is a lot more, it's a lot harder to uh, to really see how there is a pretty high skill level to yeah. the game that gives you that consistency of wins. It's like the rock, paper, scissor tournaments. Everybody thinks, oh, it's all RNG. <laughs> rock, paper, scissor isn't the No, the same people show up at the top in rock, yeah. paper, scissors tournaments. And guess what? There's a much better discriminator in Hearthstone. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Thank Do that you. impression, bro. <laughs> Thank you for Do that. Do that impression. <laughs> nope. Uh, I'm all about that. But yeah, of course, uh, Two Wet also will be given two spots in the Redemption Tournament, along with Lead Paint, if he wow. loses. For making it through that twice. So there is a reward for it as well. Wow. But uh, that ma matchup, uh, plus many more happening in Group B on the Hearthstone Legendary Series, will be 